The William Alvey Air Raid Shelter In 1726, William Alvey expressed in his will that a new school should be established in Sleaford. The school was built in 1851 and opened in 1852 for both boys and girls. On the 8th of July 1912, Mary Beavers, who was just 27, became the headmistress of what was then the girls' school. Mm. By the outbreak of World War I, she would often appear in class in a nurse's uniform. By day she taught the children at the school, by night she tended to sick and wounded soldiers at the military hospital nearby. She was awarded the Red Cross First Aid Medal for her work at the VAD hospital during the war. This medal can be seen on display in the front office of the William Alvey School. At the outbreak of World War II, tensions were high and attacks were frequent. Nighttime air raids were very frightening to adults and children alike, often culminating in mass devastation for both property and lives. To protect people, air raid shelters were built. Some were very small in private gardens and larger ones housing up to 50 people were made for use in the community. People would often return home to find their houses had been destroyed in the bomb blasts. The Royal Air Force, many of whom were based in Lincolnshire, desperately tried to defend against attacks from German warplanes bombing the towns below. When people heard the sirens warning them of an air raid, they quickly gathered their loved ones and rushed to the nearest air raid shelter. In 1938, the British government gave everyone, including babies, gas masks to protect them in case Germany dropped poisonous gas bombs on Britain. This new gas mask was made for children up to two years old. It was important that civilians always carried their gas masks and over 44 million gas masks were distributed. Wardens and other civil defence personnel proved themselves to be indispensable and heroic. They would guide people to the nearest shelter. Persistent bombing raids continued throughout the Second World War, though they saved countless lives protecting people from blasts and shrapnel. The hastily erected shelters were not strong enough to provide protection from direct hits on them. At school, the teachers would escort children through the playground to the on-site air raid shelters. Those in the air raid shelter could still hear bombs erupt outside the walls. This would have been very scary for children inside the shelter as the walls would shake as if being struck by an earthquake. Jim Shortland, who was a past pupil of the William Alvey School, remembered being with Miss Beavers in the shelter that still stands today. He used to like sitting by the entrance looking up to the sky to see what was going on above. The Hawker Hurricane, Bomber Interceptor and Fighter Plane were relied on to defend against German aircraft, including dogfighting the Messerschmitt Bf 109. During the Second World War, Mary Beavis was awarded the LARP, Local Air Raid Precautions, Silver Brooch, for her efficiency to evacuate children to the shelters. Multiple air raid shelters were built on the William Alvey site, but only one remains today. The existing air raid shelter has been carefully restored for future generations to visit. The first job was to clear away the weeds growing on top of the shelter roof and make it watertight, in the hopes it would last another hundred years. A wonderful mosaic lays at the entrance of the shelter. Inside the shelter, renovations were quite extensive. This included, amongst other things, installing electricity, replacing the concrete benches with safer wooden seating. There are many props and artefacts on display in the Air Raid Shelter Museum. The once abandoned shelter has now been restored to help visitors imagine what life would have been like in the past. We hope you agree. Thanks for watching.